uh, that we could roll a tape on. Oh yeah, this yeah, that, I mean we actually just found out about. Yeah, quick backstory here is we were just looking at this build, uh, which by the way, huge shout out to our team and the test team in particular. We've got our final candidate, our release build is ready to go for May third. But looking at this video here yesterday yeah. in the in the studio. Um, one of the changes that we've heard a lot of feedback on since launch was players wanted a little more agency over the player outlines, right? Yep. And uh, so w in our outcomes blog, we mentioned, yes, we'll have a slider in season two. Uh, but what we didn't mention was that the slider goes all the way down to zero. So you can turn off outlines if you want on opponents, and you can kind of get that more classic Halo look and feel if you want. Your teammates will still have their gamer tags displayed over their head, like you can see in this bot match. But anyone who does not have that is an enemy, so you want to shoot at them. <laughs> What's the pitch? What do we got coming? Uh, two new maps. One arena, one big team. Both look amazing. Uh, three new modes. Last Spartan Standing. We'll kick off an event, actually, uh, with launch on May 3rd. We've also got Land Grab, which will come in a later event, Entrenched, which is a lot of fun. And then we also have uh, King of the Hill, the King Returns. A fan favorite, classic one, one I've been looking forward to, and I, I've missed tremendously. But we know there's some things that we need to dig into now, today, specifically on anti-cheat. Um, the ranked experience is something that we also have recognized as something that matters right now. Um, and this includes like fundamental um, behind-the-scenes stuff that we need to do for ranked so that we can go after some of the ranked playlist issues that players feel right now in the game. Um, so that's work that we're diving yep. into. Um, network improvements around desync, um, as well as just the way the players report bugs. We just want to make sure that we've got a good handle on that. And then, of course, we're also going after big ticket, longer time frame items, um, things like match XP, Spartan career. Yep. Now, we can't today say definitively, well, th this is where these things are going to land. But it's important to just acknowledge Look, we, under, we know these things, we're going after them. They might not show up on the roadmap right now, but that's because we want the roadmap to be a credible, reliable source of, source of truth. And so uh, there's work going on behind the scenes on these quality of life, as well as many, many other things um, that we could talk yep. about. It's like we've heard loud and right. clear, our players would like to be able to mix and match more content across more Spartan cores and have more yep. customization agency, right? So um, that's another example. Mm -hmm. um, heck, I would even note, even the season two battle pass today is a reflection of player feedback and changes that were made. Yep. Things like adding in credits, um, increasing yep. the value, the free track has a lot more content and Jerry and John will talk a little bit more about that yep. uh, when we're done here. So you also mentioned in your blog, uh, the way that we would deliver these quality of life updates would be via drop pods. And if you think about an ODST drop pod, right? They're racked up in the belly of some UNSC ship. They're always ready to go. They're just, they're racked and they're, and they're waiting to drop. And that's how we approach the delivery. We want to approach the delivery of this content. Um, we don't want to just wait and hold things back for season releases. If something's ready, we want to be able to put it in a pod and drop it. Our goal is to get into a monthly cadence of a drop pod a month. We're not there yet, but that's the goal. That's part of why we're taking time in season two to go after this work. But just think about a drop pod as a delivery vehicle, content, features, bug fixes, Lots of different things could go into a drop pod. We want to be able to do them every month. If something's ready, it goes that month. It is a bit of a, it's in flux, right? There's things that are constantly shifting around. So it, it is, to your earlier point, we want to be credible and mm -hmm. accurate. So it's not possible today to say, here's yeah. what's in drop pod one, here's what's in drop pod two. But but that will be yeah. evolving and we will be remain yeah. committed to make sure we communicate that yeah. to our players. And even then, yeah. even if we already have a good sense of what's in the drop pod, until that build is cut, and has gone through a full test pass That's and right. become right. a validated release candidate, it could change, right. right? So That's there right. is a, you know, you know how games are made, obviously. Yeah. Most people probably have a sense, but not always in exact science. There's always yeah. things that you have to kind of adjust for. You mentioned this earlier, campaign co-op and mission replay. Those are features that we are actively working on. We have kind of put a, a, a stake in the ground on the roadmap. We are targeting late August to deliver those to the game. Um, from your perspective, how are those features currently tracking? What's going on over there in, in the campaign world? Yeah, well, the smile you see on my face is because I had the opportunity to sit down and play campaign uh, network co-op with uh, uh, the folks leading that effort on our team. This was maybe a couple weeks ago. I haven't. I need to play a more uh, recent build, but super excited. Awesome progress has been made by the team on the, the campaign co-op front as well as mission replay and being able to just go back in and play things with less friction. It's, it's just super, super fun. So 
very excited about the progress that the team has been making on that. Big thanks to everybody who's been working so hard on it. Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be really really fun, and it's so nice to see it getting close to the to the finish line. Sure. Too. And as far as I know, currently we still have a goal of being able to flight that via the Halo Insider flighting program mm -hmm. at some point prior to release. So. In many ways, it's it's even closer than it would appear on the roadmap. So as soon as we have more flight details, yep. we'll be looking forward to sharing those. And of course, if you're not already opted in, you can go to HaloInsider.com right now and create a free profile. And if you want to maybe be a part of a flight for co-op or something else, that's the yep. first step to take. Yep. Next up, we have Forge. Yep. We haven't talked about that quite a bit since pre-launch. We also put that on the roadmap. We've indicated that we're targeting September. Um, one big change, though, is that mm. we are calling that an open beta now, which was right. a little bit different. Um, so might be helpful just from your perspective. What does that mean to you, uh, open beta? I have seen some people speculating and some concerns that yeah, yeah. you know, it's like one-tenth of Forge, and it's right. just going to be this small little experience. But what do we want players to know about that? So when we say beta, it is the full feature set for launch for, for Forge. Like, this is not a stripped down version. This is not, uh, you know, some features turned off, some features not. We've been flighting Forge for quite some time. Um, and so what people will experience in this open beta is the Forge tool set. Um, you know, some things are going to come later, like additional pallets and those kinds of things. But Forge is Forge has, is going to be its own, you know, uh, service as well. Like we're going to add things over time to Forge too. But you're right, people should not look at the beta label and think, oh, is this some sort of um, you know, handcuff version of Forge. No, not at all. Like when people when people get it, they'll be they'll be playing it with a full robust feature set for. You noted that we have been flighting it to a private audience for I think honestly maybe two years or more at this stage. Yeah, it's been a long um, time. Yeah. I think it's the right decision. Essentially, by moving into an open beta, we can get that core tool set right into the game as soon as possible, and it lets everyone in the community with no barriers or restrictions start making real content and real experiences that will then persist. So. It's one of our ways that we can also yeah. help address the feedback that people want more content, more experiences. We get to recruit the community to help us in some regards. And I'll just say there's been some stuff maybe leaked out there, and there's what? A, lot, leaks? Lot, a lot to be excited about. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, Forge, Forge right. is going to be pretty awesome yeah. for this new generation. Medic, on me. Yes, Grab that crit. Medic back. No. They aren't hostiles. They're wolves, back from the hunt. This neural link is corrupted, ma'am. I'll have to pull the chip and- No! Do that, he dies and we lose everything he risked his life for. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, you'll find out May 3rd. When we plan our seasonal stories, we want to make sure that the player, all of you are at the heart of this story, driving events. If we kick off a crisis like this, we want the players to be the solution to that crisis. So this cinematic would immediately roll into the first event of the season. No spoilers, where you as a player uh, begin to work through this problem and by playing, progress, progress the story. And that in short is seasonal narrative. But if we wanna bring up the image uh, of, the, of the Spartans, so you can see in this image, you have uh, Spartan Din in the middle there on his knees. You have Spartan Eklund on the right. Brian, who's that Spartan on the left? That, well, that's the player. That's you. That's you in the game. Um, and so however you show up with your customization, that'll be, that'll be you. If you're, if you're rocking... My full neon Spartan and, and all my, and my katanas and, or my samurai, it's all going to be there, right? 100%. My mohawk? Yep. yep. Okay. One of the things from the very early days of Halo that I am still super passionate about is this idea in Halo 1 that it was BYOG bring your own gun to the cinematics. Whatever gun you had in your hand in a Halo 1 cinematic would show up. That's true for Infinite. Well, in this case, I guess it's bring your own armor, bring your own customization. You want to rock, I don't know, Brian, whatever crazy stuff with your mohawk. Oh, we'll do it. Yeah, that's, it'll, it'll be there. And so just another small way, but an important way that we're really emphasizing, hey, this is you. This is you at the heart of our story. Right there, boots on the ground, center of the event, center of the crisis. 
um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. How do we want to make challenges? How do we start pairing those challenges stronger to the playlist you're playing instead of locking you, uh, locking you down right from the beginning? That won't affect you here in season two, uh, but we have we've called a lot of the uh, the challenges that were problematic for everyone, and like the uh, Killjoy challenge, like, yeah, yeah, Killjoy, or you know, not as many Ravager challenges, those sorts of things, mm -hmm. uh, and really try to focus on just the heart of just playing playing in specific modes and being successful there. We've got ultimate rewards every week yeah. that pop up that players can earn. Uh, we're we got a lot of feedback around season ones. Yeah, uh, we had yeah. some repeating emblems, uh, but season two, we kind of, we're turning the corner. Players that they actually value. And so we've moved it uh, away from a lot of the consumable pieces. We've moved away from a lot of the emblems um, and other things that they're valuable, but when you're talking about a weekly challenge, they don't really hit the high value that players are looking for, where players are looking for new coatings or new uh, geo, those sorts of things, new visors, mm -hmm. those pieces. And that's what we want to try to do moving forward. Uh, coatings, yeah. visors, and uh, we, uh, stances, yeah. right? Yeah. As well as a little geo. Yeah, you, you mentioned might get some geo. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and then up next, uh, the shop. There was yeah. uh, a lot of conversations around the shop when we launched and we did make uh, some strides to improve that uh, and we'll have even more in season two. Yeah. Then we're also starting to look at like, let's do some individual sales. We will be looking at the future of continuing to make improvements so that if you open up a bundle and you just want, want one item, we are looking at that um, to help solve for that challenge. I know we had a lot of feedback around cores, right? Yeah. Customization, uh, cores and kits, right? Kind of being yep. locked down. Uh, but we're gonna start changing that starting within season two. We are looking to move away completely from the core system. Um, and what that means for season two is you'll start seeing uh, specifically what I would call in canon cores. So, you know, your Spartan five to seven to, you know, whatever we're doing for infinite on a canon perspective, uh, we're trying to make that ubiquitous. So if you earn a coding, it's usable across all of those cores, or if you earn a shoulder piece, it's usable across all those core cores. And our focus for season two, not from day one, but as we move through season two is that your visors, your helmets, your coatings, those will be the first things that we go after. And then we'll slowly trying to move everything uh, to be more ubiquitous. It gets a little harder when you take a look at, say, the Yori armor or some of the fracture cores, um, because they do have just fundamentally different structures um, that not everything fits in. Uh, and uh, so right now, we're really taking a look at the cannon cores and leaving the fracture cores um, to their own right now. Yeah, and kits. Kits are the kind of fit in that same challenge where the original design philosophy was a kit was more like a uniform. We wanted players to just press quickly basically uh put that uniform on whether it be esports or whether it be a character and just say hey look that kit goes there um and we want to make from a design philosophy perspective we want our content to be able to be used across all of our uh uh basically our players characters to be able to go and make their spartans look the way they want including kits uh, those won't be on day one but it's something that we're hoping to address in a drop pod um, coming in season two. Yeah, sure. So the first thing, um, as everybody knows, our battle passes don't um, expire, which means you have to have a way uh, to equip the passes that you want to go and earn your content in. And so this will be the first time that you see this from season one. Um, and, uh, you know, here this has been completed, so you can't equip something that you've already completed because there's nothing to earn left. But had you had other things to earn there, you would have been able to equip it very similar to how you're equipping uh, any piece of armor. Um, and so you equip it and that's where your XP will end up going. Um, so whether you're earning XP per match or whether you're earning it um, through uh, challenge systems, uh, it'll go into the battle pass that you have equipped. Uh, so here we've got uh, the season two battle pass. First yeah. look at it. Uh, what are some of the things that initially jump out to you here? Yeah, so one of the things I, I just want to just take a look at these first six levels is it really shows some of our structural differences that we're trying to make uh, for the battle pass all up. Um, you only see one consumable. Uh, you see credits starting to be earned. And when we, when we took a look at, you know, again, talking with our business team to say, hey, look, some of the, the original reasons for us not to have credits in the battle pass system were because if you had a battle pass that wasn't, wasn't going to expire, we wanted to, we wanted to make sure that we weren't losing too much 
Um, and so we challenge those systems and we're saying, hey, look, we think there is more value for the players, both from an engagement perspective, as well as every player knowing that if they've purchased a pass, they can earn that pass back, we think is a pretty powerful thing. We know it's industry standard, um, but we broke the industry uh, standard with not expiring the battle pass. But that really helps us, I think, get back to what will provide that value back to players. But also the other big thing you see here is um is your first free armor core within that that uh uh first six levels this is pretty critical for us because one of the things we felt uh looking at season one in season one you didn't earn a core um if you were a free player mm -hmm. um and for us when we take a look at valuing the player's time and and where we've kind of failed in a couple of ways um this is one of the pretty critical pieces and we wanted to make sure that um, as we honor uh, everyone's time, part of that is as you play, you're you're actually earning meaningful content, even if you're a free player, um, and earning you know a full suit is is the first step of that. Uh, but yeah. yeah, and then the great thing you're, you'll start seeing here is as uh, Uni starts scrolling uh, through this content is you're going to start seeing uh, content here that matches our narrative theme and. And as Joseph talked about, you know, Eklund and Din, uh, they're the main characters for this pass. Um, and they're lone wolves. They're wolves or Spartans who've been out on the hunt. Uh, they've been separated from the UNSC over a long period of time. So they've kind of had to scrap and pull together their armor. And you see that theme pretty much throughout the battle pass. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the critical things we're trying to do overall for uh, creatively as we move forward that being tied to the story, the ongoing story, as well as the look and the feel is felt um, throughout uh, the experience. And like I said, you'll 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 start seeing more coatings, uh, again, more unique gear, which mm -hmm. hopefully for every player who is looking uh, at playing Halo and uh, joining us for a new season, there's a lot of content there for them to go after that they haven't seen before, um, even if they've been a part of the con uh, franchise for 20 years. Yeah, so. Lots of good stuff, especially yeah. for that Lone Wolves Rakshasa armor core. Right? Exactly. And this is a free helmet that you can get right off the bat, yep. you know, just right at tier 11. Yeah. And you'll see there's less, there are still swaps and XP mm -hmm. boosts in there. Mm -hmm. They are still valuable for players, um, but you were seeing them less than you, you were in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and even events, events completely have removed um, our consumables across the board. And our events are focused as a primary means in which uh you are just you, you are earning through your time and your investment in the franchise mm -hmm. um a way to earn new content that we haven't seen before and uh as part of the battle pass you also see uh some mark 7 content right so players who've <laughs> been joining us since launch who had that mark 7 armor for yeah. free are going to get new new pieces of armor here in the, in the battle pass as well also yeah. some on the free track yep. and this is something that Everybody has access to the Mark 7 core because it comes with the free to play multiplayer. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that we want to continue to build on again, just to help make sure that story of the of the Spartans um, continues to grow of what, what the UNSC Mark 7 look like. <laughs> yeah. Nice AI color. High charity because yeah. it's got that covenant purple. I like it. Oh, that's a good one. Get some of that camo, you know? Yep. One of my favorite uh, weapon charms now, the combat evolved one. Toss the plasma grenade, launch the weapon to you, pick it up, go on a tear. Uh, this and the uh, there's the extermination uh, weapon charm that'll be available with uh, Twitch drops this weekend at Kansas City. So I'm looking forward to having both of those to rock too. Yeah, and this this chess piece pretty early on is just a cr just a critical way in which you can see the that you know, thrown together, hey, look, we had to strap things together with wires and mm -hmm. and straps to, you know, help get this piece of gear be protective um, and help that Spartan uh, still main, do his duty and uh, be successful for the UNSC. Mm -hmm. And now we're starting to piece together one Eklund. of our lone wolves, yeah, Eklund yeah. here. So you start seeing her frame and, yeah, you start seeing wasps. I don't actually remember if we had any wasp coatings in the season one. Uh, battle pass but. i can't remember for battle pass specifically but there were a few ways to earn and uh, also buy buy some coatings for the wasp like i know i've got one uh that i rocked that i got in campaign uh but yeah 
And you see, you got you go next for the coating. You get a nice free coating here. Um, you know, and, mm -hmm. the, and the the great thing we're trying to do here again, you're seeing some different color variations and and just some more customization for the player look and feel. Um, but you go to uh, jump on ahead to yeah. Eklund's, Eklund's piece, well, yeah. a nice little stance uh, we can use to show off. Yeah, and I just want to remind everybody, like, I know we're using a Spartan here. Th this Spartan that you're seeing here, uh, when we look at poses and whatnot, this is all things that are acquired in the Battle Pass. So there's nothing yeah. from the store here. So everything you see on that Spartan is from the Battle Pass being put together. It's a nice dealio right there. Yep. Let's see. Uh, boom. There's Eklund. Yeah. And so this is her kit. This is what she looks like in the cinematics. Um, and you're seeing a lot of the, the, obviously the way we put kits together. And one of the great things, again, from a character perspective, this just allows you, if you want to look like Eklund, this is what she looks like. And this is, um, how, how her Spartan comes together as a character. Real nice. Some more Mark seven gear, right? Lots of good stuff. Uh, oh my gosh. I'll dare you to pronounce this one. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some additional shoulder pieces for Mark Seven as well. Uh, Rampart kind of looks like the EOD, you know, yep. of old, a classic. Keep jumping forward here. Some new gloves and some uh, chest attachments here. Like we were yeah, saying, I just always, lots of good Mark Seven are stuff. Really good. Mm -hmm. uh, this one on the free track, a lot of players will recognize from our. Uh, key art on season one. Oh yeah, yeah yeah you can uh, now get it for free just in that that free track or in that chest attachment nice little helmet attachment there bright red on butler i can dig yep. it yeah but lots of good stuff right and uh one thing about the uh the battle pass that we have talked about um or haven't talked about yet is overall progression system stuff. Uh, I know we wanted to kind of talk about that kind of with the challenges, but I, yep. I skipped over it a bit. We do want to uh, make a long-term progression system, uh, but that's not in scope here for season two, right? Yeah. So what we're trying to do is, um, you know, we're trying to get the foundation ready for it with, uh, you know, earned XP uh, per match, mm -hmm. um, but really that Spartan uh, rank or the Spartan career that we're all looking for, uh, that's something we're putting long-term investment in. Um, you know, part of our drop pod system is to try to bring things online faster mm -hmm. uh, in, in pieces if possible. And this is definitely a top ask for, for us to, uh, with the team to get the Spartan progression system all up so that people feel like they have a career outside of uh, the seasonal battle pass. Mm -hmm. And we've also got uh, some nice chest attachments right here uh, coming up. Another pretty darn sweet looking Mark Seven one, yeah. the Pack Rat. I always love the grenade canisters. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you got those, kind of reminds me of Emil. Yeah, exactly. And then up next, we've got. Uh, let's see what we got here. Nice little vibe. Security flag. Access attempt locked. Are you seeing this? Success. This can't be right. No way. Firewall compromised. This doesn't make sense. Breach detected. Do we know what's vulnerable? Oh, God. Core files target. We've got an intact matrix core. Signature is to do how Answer me. Where did the core Data go? In I think we're about to find out. They're here. Transfer complete. Artificial minds, real solution. Here, this one is one of my favorites, right? Yeah. With that black and red. And this is why, I mean, I really just like the, where you have unique color sets uh, that are high contrast. Um, these are the ones that I've always just enjoyed. You know, like the single armor reds and the things mm -hmm. that are really, uh, you know, non, non balanced is really mm -hmm. cool for me. Yeah, I'm really digging that look there. Uh, continued Mark Seven, right? Lots of good stuff yeah. over there. Got some Rakshasa knee pads. Yeah, and this is the you know again you're seeing tape, uh, electrical tape here, and just pulling the pieces together, and uh, it's just again a really unique, unique look compared to what 
you know, it seems like it's fresh off the factory floor. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and w- one thing I've uh, kind of noticed here as we've been going through the battle passes, once you get to the second half, yeah, like things start Starts getting real crazy. nice. Yeah. yeah. And you see that with this, uh, the cool shot shoulder piece right here. Yeah. Um, got it on both sides and you got a nice sweet looking armor coating here, but yeah, like you get this and you really start to see the tubes, the, <laughs> the yeah. patchwork, right? Oh snap. I'm on the battlefield. Let me, let me get yeah. something together, uh, and scrounge it. Oh. Yeah. This looks like a whole filtration system to replace the armor. No, let's go light. to the, Ooh, the GRD. Yeah. yeah. The GRD and the... So this is a fan favorite from Reach uh, that was th- cut from Reach, then brought into Reach via MCC not too long ago, and now it's making its appearance here in Infinite, which is awesome to have, right? The GRD never dies, right? <laughs> Some brass knuckle type That's things. That's right. That's fantastic. <laughs> There's very few gloves that I get really excited about, but I, those gloves are amazing. I love um, the health pack. This yep. is so good. People will... Some OG fans will really appreciate this. You got the med kit on mm-hmm. both the gun attachment as well as a utility kind of hip yeah. attachment. So good. Big fan of that. Uh, GRD attachment. Some more coatings, right? This one's nice, like purple with a yeah. slight like touch yeah. of gold to it. Yeah. Really liking that. Uh, ooh, this one. Yeah, the Packmaster's glare. Yeah. So we learned a lot from from the cyber showdown of you know what we could do with effects and um, I think again the art team this mm-hmm. is a huge I think a really good attachment for players. Yeah, and uh, one thing that I I've really come to appreciate is we've also been learning our own tools on how to make things even better and cooler. Yep. Right, uh, it's a n- newer engine, right? So we're getting familiar with it too, making even newer, cooler stuff. Uh, and kind of pushing its limits even more with future customization content, which has been really sweet to think about, right? Like when we launch Forge and people get their hands on, they make kind of more simple things, right? Same kind of basic concept applies to us with our own tools getting better and better, making cooler and cooler things. Nice little helmet attachment here. Yeah, I just love the, again, throwing together tape and A little walkie talkie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get more into the den stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Nice blades on the hip there. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. We're starting to get into den's stuff. You're right. That's on the so free good. track. Yep. You got a nice. He's clearly a hunter. Yeah. <clears throat> Visor there. Shoulder pads. Attachment for den. Yep. Yeah, this second half is getting getting there. Oh, some it's of my favorite shoulder pieces. Really spicy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one is kind of a elite shoulder piece that you have taken as your own. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Just be like, uh, I need that more than you do now. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna take it and use it. This um, is where you can really start saying, you know, just mixing and matching with what the universe and the armor pieces of, that, of the universe all up, not just Spartan. Another stance with that Spartan that we stood up there. Nice little darker black clean coating. Here's and then here's a full look at Din. Yeah. This, is what, this is what you, you'll see in the, the cinematic and him full characters Joseph was talking about um, earlier. Just really really unique really strong uh character look profile uh yep digging in yep this i think Ooh. this i don't know if we had a full uh to go to the next one yeah. Ooh, there we go yeah we had mythic effects set yeah, yeah. Mythic set. You, i think you can see bits and pieces of this in our moj trailer actually that just mm-hmm. came out a couple of spartans are rocking this you can see a little bit of the green trail around them. Yeah. Uh, but some really cool effects. And then, to of course, the, the, uh, they want, mm-hmm. everyone's going to want these Elite Skull shoulder pieces are just phenomenal. Yeah. They are looking good. They just pulled together like it looks like, you know, D 
moved in, put this on himself, and helped made it fit his whole armor set. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Nice little wrist attachment there, too. Yep. Deacon Crest shield node. But yeah, yeah. the Skull Bearer trophy. Clean. And overall, battle pass. Lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. The seasonal kickoff uh, with uh, and the first event... Right on May 3rd, yeah. Inception, what's the... Interference. Uh, interference. Yes. The other I word. Uh, so <laughs> interference, and uh, the great thing about that is, um, you know, it's another first right off the bat, 10 items for you to go and earn, and uh, you won't have any consumables there. It's all it's all gear. It's all customization stuff for the, for the player. And then yeah. you'll have the new Fracture coming out uh, within that first month, and I uh, can't wait for everyone to see... So that dressed up as their version of the almost World War II looking Spartan. It's really yeah. amazing. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then after the event ends, we're going to have that uh, live in our larger playlist offering uh, with Last Farm standing on all the big team maps. Yeah, right. So a, we won't the, just limit it to Breaker. Yeah. That's point. the other big thing that, you know, we're trying to be consistent on is now every time we launch an event, you'll see it move into uh, the general uh, playlist so you can continue to play it. Um, as a game mode. We talked about, you know, we've always said once you buy the Battle Pass in Halo Infinite, it never expires. That is true. Um, but we want to be really clear that the free pass, so if you've never purchased a Season 1 Battle Pass and you've just been unlocking the free tracks, that will not persist. Um, and this may be a surprise to some folks. Um, so we wanted to be upfront and make sure that we were clear about that. So starting next week with the launch of Lone Wolves, uh, if you own the premium pass, it will persist. You can still switch back and forth exactly like you just saw in that segment with Jerry and Unishek. But the free pass will not persist um, unless you at some point decide you'd like to go back and purchase it, mm -hmm. at which point, boom, it's back. And it would also still carry your progress forward. So that is a, a bit of a, a just a nuance you want to be very upfront and clear about. Um, so just wanted to make that correction. We saw people in chat talking about George uh, and his armor kit. Uh, and some of you might enjoy seeing this. That's a very nice shoulder piece uh, in great, great detail in season two. Uh, so I wanted to make sure we at least got to show that. So, and uh, the shoulder so gate, the shoulder gate yeah. is no more. Yeah, we, this one kind of trended on the Halo subreddit pretty frequently anytime it got posted. So I'm happy we could kind of show that off. Uh, and also the Cyber Showdown, uh, both the visor and Mohawk should be nice and leveled we we brought out the protractors and they're, made sure they're nice and even they're yeah. nice and centered now right? yes okay yeah. good we have uh some other things you'll see seasons or when season two rolls around we'll have a rank reset for ranked and there will be new ranked rewards ranked emblems that you can get that are kind of focused on that rank that you obtain and it's going to have like a lone wolf's twist to it Right, so you see a bronze one with the wolf inside of it, and we also have some uh, some classic emblems making a return, like this one. I I know a lot of fans from back in Halo Two love the uh, is it card suits. Yeah, uh, we've got the the clubs, diamonds, and even a Florida lease you can see on the right there. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, that now that officially wraps up the customization segment, if yes. you will. Yes.